Hey there, my name is Christy. I'm the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life and a vetted ClickUp consultant. One of the hottest topics here at DeSilva Life, especially as we're creating templates, is content processes. So in today's video, I wanna go through creating a simple content process and organizing that in ClickUp. Now, before we dive in, I wanna let you know, we do have an entire content calendar bundle. I'll make sure to link that in the description below, not only for sale on its own, but also available in our template vault with all of our other 40 plus plug and play templates. So this content calendar bundle does include a workflow for every single platform because we do believe in creating a process for each platform because they function differently. But if you're just getting started with creating content and building out a content process, this video is for you. I want to walk through how to just create a simple content process, manage the different pieces and make your life so much easier. So with that, let's dive into creating a simple content calendar in ClickUp. Let's talk about creating a simple content calendar in ClickUp. Now, I wanna note that we do have a content calendar bundle that has workflows and templates for every single platform. So if I show you inside this marketing platforms folder, you'll see blog, email, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Because once you start really getting into ClickUp and using it for content, you'll realize that every platform is a bit different. So your workflows may look and feel a little bit different. And also, if you have a team, there may be certain workflows that certain people have ownership of or are involved in the process for different platforms. So that's something to take into consideration when planning these templates um, and these workflows in ClickUp. But if you're just getting started with content planning and you want to get some inspiration on how to build out a content calendar, then this video is perfect for you. Okay, so let's dive right in and talk about how you can set this up. So first let's talk about the different statuses. These are the typical statuses we use for content planning. Again, they may vary a little bit per platform, but generally we have the statuses to create, in progress, ready for review, needs edits, ready to schedule, scheduled, and published. So you can always edit those statuses by clicking in here, creating these, changing the colors, switching them around, right? And let's quickly talk about the difference between not started, active, done, and closed statuses. If you don't see this not started status right here, that's because this is actually a click app. So if you go into your settings and turn this click app on, then you'll have a not started status. If it's not on, you're just gonna see active, done, and closed. So not started is essentially saying, this task has not been touched, where then active would be in progress, ready for review, needs edits, ready to schedule. Done statuses are essentially gonna say, okay, this task is done in whatever way. And here we have scheduled in our leads pipeline, we have lost lead or not a good fit. And then closed would be, this is completely closed, the last status that it'll live in. So that would be published. Now another note with done statuses, as you'll see here, the due date will show green. So it's not going to show that red overdue because this is technically, technically marked as done. So once our content goes into the scheduled status, there's nothing else we have to do for it, so we consider it done. Now, one other note I do want to mention as well is if I click into the YouTube workflow, you're going to see that I have two extra statuses here. Well, a couple different, right? So I have queue scripting. That's because this looks different for YouTube, but I also have to do and complete and all the way at the bottom, I have published as a done status. That's because within the YouTube workflow, we do utilize subtasks for the content because these are so robust. So we want the statuses for the subtask to always have a to do and complete option instead of it being to create and published because that doesn't really make sense for things like reviewing a draft. It doesn't really make sense that's a to create, it's more of a to do. Okay, so I want to mention that, but for the simple content calendar, you can just really use this as a pipeline and you don't necessarily need subtasks. You can use subtasks, but you don't have to. Okay, so those are the statuses. 
The name of the task would be the title or topic. You then have assignee, due date, and comments outside of here. So the assignee would be, you know, who is responsible for that task and what is the due date of that next step whereas the publish date is a date custom field. So let's talk about custom fields and columns for a second. If you go on the show slash hide, you can see the different fields that you can add to the outside of the task, assignee, due date, and comments being some of them, right? Whereas custom fields are saying, okay, I wanna add different elements that will be applicable for each task and piece of content. So I wanna know on the outside of each or the inside, what the publish date of this is, what the caption is gonna be, the call to action, the image and video, and the month that it's going to be scheduled out. So that way when you click into here, you have those things, you can see them on the outside, but if you ever add these custom fields as well, you'll also have access to them inside the task as well. And I can see these three unused ones here. Okay, so we have them here. And so publish date is a date custom field. Caption is a long text, text area, long text. So then I can use line breaks in there. Call to action is what am I promoting with this piece of content? Image and video is a file custom field. So you can either upload it directly to here, or you can also link to Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, etc. And then when you click on the image as well, you can add comments to it, download it from here, etc. And then the month is a drop down custom field, and I'll show you why we used that in a second. So here we just added the months. You can also change this to be um, different colors as well, but that is here the drop down custom field. So here as we're planning, we're able to get this, this information, see in this list view where each piece of content is along these different statuses. So this is the status view, and then we actually added another view and pinned it to the top and called it month view. This is because we wanted to, this was actually a request we got from our students in system school, that they wanted to be able to, yes, see it in a pipeline like this, but then they wanted to see each month what content was going out, how many pieces they ended up publishing, etc. So what we did here was we then, instead of grouping by status, we grouped by the custom field month, and then we added this status on the outside. So let me show you what it looked like at first. We went ahead and clicked show slash hide status, and then hid that month custom field. So either you could duplicate this, right, if you wanted to do this, duplicate as a list, call it month, so let's just call this one month two. And then you can see that I wanna group this by the custom field month. I wanna go ahead and hide this month, and then I wanna bring up the status. So that is how we created that view. And also if you ever hide any of these custom fields, when you click add column, you could click show slash hide and they'll all be waiting for you at the bottom of this list. So you can always bring them back if you wanna show them. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this view. I just wanted to show you how we created that additional view. So group by status, group by month, and then you can have two task calendars or well, two calendars here. So here we have a task calendar that is color coded by status. So you can see what's been published out, what needs review, etc. We also like to show a signee if there's multiple people involved in this content calendar. And then you'll also be able to drag things from, you know, status from date to date if you want to reschedule anything. So this is the task calendar. And then we also have the publish calendar. So this, instead of showing start and due date, we turned this off here. We actually are just showing publish date. So that way, the task calendar you're seeing, what everyone's working on, and if anything's late, 
And then the published calendar is saying, okay, when is each piece of content actually set to be published? And are they scheduled in review? Maybe those are past due, et cetera. So that is really just a look into a simple content calendar that you can create. And now one more thing that I want to mention is also automations. So as you are really getting used to this and utilizing it with just yourself or maybe with a team, you can start using automations. And I just want to give just a couple examples to get your wheels turning for how this could be applicable to you. So what you could do here is when the status changes, let's say to ready for review, you can change the assignee to the person that's responsible for reviewing it and then change the due date, let's say to one day after the trigger date, meaning one day after it was set to ready for review. That way it automatically assigns it to the person that's in charge of it next. So say Christy reviews it, then you can set another automation that if the status changes to ready to schedule, it then reassigns the person that's supposed to schedule it with a due date of one or two days later. So this way, ClickUp is doing the heavy lifting and communication for you, and you're able to save time. The person does their job, they set it to ready for review, and now they can forget about it. Another option here as well, if you are using those to do and complete statuses, are you can also, instead of changing the assignee, you can create a subtask that says, and let me actually show you this one. So when the status changes to ready for a review, I'm gonna create a subtask, call it review IG post, and then you can do task names, you know what post you're reviewing. Then you would do the same thing, add an assignee and a due date, and then this would show up on their calendar as review IG post instead of ClickUp 101 or whatever the name of that post is. So a couple different options you can do there. And then that's really why we have that due date as opposed to using that due date as a published date. Because if we want to make sure we're doing specific things on certain days, we're utilizing that due date field, the published date doesn't change. So that is really it for this simple content calendar walkthrough. You can add different custom fields, different statuses, apply this to different platforms and really make it your own. But I just wanted to give you a little inspiration on how you can create a content calendar in ClickUp. So I hope that tutorial was helpful for you in creating a content process and content calendar in ClickUp. Reminder, we do have an entire content calendar bundle. If you want to just plug that right into your ClickUp and start planning all of your content with ease. But if you did like this video and it was helpful for you, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna support this channel even more, you can go ahead and click that PayPal link in the description below. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.